But I'm delighted to share you, with you that John Smith and his mother Joyce are both with us this afternoon. Please help me welcome them to the stage. A 14-year-old St. Charles boy who spent 15 minutes underwater after falling through the ice of Lake St. Louis has made a recovery no one could explain. I think we're at a place nationally and locally, particularly here in St. Louis, where people are looking for hope. They are looking for a sign that there is something bigger than each of us, that there is something beyond what we struggle with each day. The paramedics that brought him in said he'd been down for 15 to 20 minutes. It was very grim. No, we, we didn't have any hope for him. I mean, we're gonna do our best. Even in the cases that I've seen where we do our advanced cardiac life support and, and give them epinephrine and, and shock arrhythmias, after that length of time, all I ever see is somebody that goes from dying in the ER to dying in an ICU. I was at the end of what I could offer medically. I was waiting for the mother to come in. I watched them as they were working on John, a very tall young man, and he was working, you could see the stress on his face, and he was working so hard on John, and they kept saying, no pulse, no pulse, no pulse, and finally, Dr. Sutter told me, he said, you can go up to the bed. And I remember walking up to the end of the bed and getting a hold of John's feet, which was uncovered and cold, and I started praying, dear God, send your Holy Spirit to just fill his life and, and give him breath. I don't think I can emphasize it enough. This wasn't just somebody saying, please God, bring my son back. She was screaming. You could hear it down the hall. Uh, she was yelling at God. And when she did that, it, it was just, uh, I mean, the evidence is, is there. It was moments later I heard them say, and I don't even know who said it, we've got a pulse, we've got a pulse. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. I doubt that anyone out there with uh, knowledge of the facts is going to deny that it was a miracle. The only factors really that medically were in John's favor is that this was a cold water drowning. This really shouldn't have worked in John's case because what you really need to have happen is for the brain to get cold before the blood flow stops to the brain. This is a bona fide miracle. It was a miracle that he just woke up and recognized everybody. Um, you could tell that he was in there. He, you know, when we said, do you know who this person is? Or do you know that we're here? Or he would shake his head yes or no, answering appropriately. Um, he was able to then squeeze our hands. The doctors had gone from that evening saying, man, there's really not much hope uh, to man, we're starting to see incredible change already. So it was a very emotional time. There was, everybody was crying, including me. It was just an amazing feeling. I just couldn't believe that I was a part of that. It's truly a miracle that I'm alive, really, and I just think that, I thank God every time I hear a new, like a new piece to what happened. I think it's a way to prove that he's still out there, he's still alive. This is a testament that we really are exceptional healers and we can provide the best care to our patients. We did reveal the healing presence of God. The fact that we had super doctors and super nurses, I mean, I, I can't even say enough about the doctors and the nurses in the ICU. They were phenomenal godsend as far as I was concerned, caring, loving, worrying about John. I truly believe in my 39 years of experience in these types of rescues, this was truly a series of small miracles that have occurred. It occurred in that water with the firefighters. It occurred here at St. Joe's West. 
It occurred back at Cardinal Glennon, and the results are what we see that occurred when John walked out of Cardinal Glennon, a fine, healthy young team. There's really no words, and I know that our team and those that have um, been involved in this, um, and the Glennon team and everyone, um, we're, we're changed because of it. If you weren't a believer before, you're a believer now. It's our mission statement. It's our mission, not our statement. It's our mission. It came to life. And now we'd like to talk with Joyce and John for just a few minutes. Sorry, forgot my questions. Wow. For those of us um, who've seen this movie, it, it's just incredible. You have lived it. Um, how does that movie compare with what you actually experienced? Um, in the movie, there was Hollywood, and there was real life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. I will say this. The doctors, Dr. Sutter, Dr. Jeremy Garrett, um, and Dr. Ream are amazing men. And I can't say enough good things about them. They are, Dr. Garrett, we went back to write our book and we spent about an hour and a half talking to him one day. And I wouldn't let him tell me right away what all was going wrong with John's body because I didn't want negativity in the room. But that day, he sat there and explained all the stuff that was going wrong in John's body. One of them could have killed him. All of them should have taken him out. Yet he was explaining how he would lay awake at night and think of things that should be done to help John do his things and, and to get better. Dr. Reem was put there for me. God put him there for me because in these tense moments, he knew exactly what to say to absolutely crack me up <laughs> and relieve that tense moment. Uh, they were phenomenal, but in the movie, I want you to know when you see this, if you see it tonight, I did not tell Dr. Jeremy Garrett, the professional, to take John off of anything, okay? So that's, that's off. <laughs> His medical degree goes much further than mine does. <laughs> a little movie drama, right? A little, a little drama. <laughs> so John, um, how's your life changed since the movie came out? I mean, red carpet premieres, People Magazine, that must be pretty incredible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I definitely didn't expect to be doing all this at you know, 18, 19 years old, but it's been a huge blessing. Um, it's been a huge honor. Uh, I mean, and people think that uh, people have as assumptions about me now that I'm on all these things. Um, yeah, I was there. <laughs> that was fun. But, uh, you know, I'm just a kid, and that's who I am. I still make mistakes daily. I'm 19. I'm getting ready to go to college. Um, but, you know, Devon Franklin, the movie producer, you know, from the get go, he kind of put his uh, hedge of protection over me. He kind of just put his arm around me, and I'm going to walk with you. And he told me this from the get go. He said, Remember to stay humble and stay hungry. Staying humble and remembering, you know, where you came from. I mean, I'm from St. Louis, you know, um, nothing's really going to change about that. But staying hungry and chasing out after what the Lord has for you. And, you know, that's what I always remember is that God gave me this huge platform, you know, to share his word and to share this story. And, you know, I don't want to abuse that. So, yes, this is an amazing honor, you know, getting to stand up there in front of the people and have a movie about you and, you know, to have this honor. But in the end of the day, I'm still just John. Well, we think you're pretty magical. <laughs> I'm sure that you've had a lot of people share stories of how this miracle has inspired them or affected their own lives. And Joyce was telling me a little bit about being in the ICU and talking to other families while in the hospital. What's that been like? And can you talk a little bit about what that experience was like for you? When your child is brought in on a helicopter fighting for his life. You learn when you're laying in that ICU room at night and you hear the chopper come in, you know 
that something desperate needs to be done. And so you learn to pray for those people. But there were boys on either side of John's ICU room, one uh, Jackson Schuling, who had a, a syndrome from a flu that he got and was losing every control of all these muscles in his body. On the other side of the room was a little boy who had drowned in his family's pond. And it's just interesting how you intricately get woven into these people's lives. Uh, I walked out in the hallway the morning John woke up and um, Leanne and her husband Chris were up against the wall and they were crying. And so immediately I just walked over to them and I said, can I pray for you? And they said, yes. And so I didn't know what was wrong, but later on found out they were having to do a major uh, emergency tracheotomy on him to keep him breathing and alive. Uh, the other little boy, um, Casey, one of the nurses that you saw in the video, came to me and she said, Joyce, she said, we have a couple here whose little boy is drowned. They lost their little girl five years ago in a car accident. Can you come and talk to them? You know, it's, it's that being able to share and being able to go to somebody and having nurses and doctors that care enough for the other patients to have you come and do this, it was very... It was very heartwarming to me, but it also showed me how much they cared for their patients. Thank you. Just one more question. Is there any message that you could give to us as healthcare leaders, um, the employees and physicians that we work with every day about your experience? I would say keep doing what you're doing to the best of your ability. I mean, giving hope for others. You know, that's what Jesus did when he was here. He gave hope. That's what he still does. He gives hope. He's the hope of the world. And when you can take that in your jobs and you can pass that on to the people that you're treating, it means so much more than your medical degree. It means that you care and you're compassionate and you never need to ever pass up a chance. We always say this, to be Jesus with flesh onto someone else. Thank you. Thank you both for coming and taking time out of your day to tell your story. And we look forward to seeing the movie tonight. Would you give Joyce and John a great round of applause? <laughs>